Welcome to the second edition of Test Frame Tuesday. Um, the test frame we'll be testing today is the sender test frame in the number one crossbar. Unlike the number five that we talked about last week, the number one crossbar has a much larger test frame lineup. Um, this is in part because every single part of the machine has its own test apparatus. So there isn't one master frame that could reach everything on a common bus. Instead, we have dedicated frames for each thing. Now this frame happens to be the sender test frame. Um, it tests originating senders, sometimes also confusingly called subscriber senders, um, for our purposes of the same thing. And if you've watched some of our other videos, you may remember that originating senders are responsible for giving you dial tone, for receiving and storing your digits, uh, for looking up a translation in the marker, and then when it gets that translation, the sender will then outpulse information to this office or to another distant office, depending, um, and communicate to that machine what number we're trying to connect to. So this test frame kind of wraps itself around each sender one at a time. So it connects to the input side of the sender and pretends to dial in a number of different ways. And it also connects to the output side of the sender and makes sure that what the sender's doing is consistent with what we're telling it it should do. Just to start off, I can do a pretty uh, simple call. Um, we can do 833-5678. And in that case, I expect the sender to you off, you, uh, you off as well. Um, I expect the sender to just accept the dial digits and then we're going to be using revertive pulse signaling to outpulse the called number to the distant office, which again, in this case, the sender test frame is gonna be listening to what the sender's doing. There isn't actually a distant office connected. So if we just run the test from here with this number and these settings, it will start at the first sender and then increment through all of them as long as the tests pass. So it's gonna repeat the test because I've operated the repeat key. Here it's dialing, and it's dialing, and then out pulsing up here, dialing, out pulsing, out pulsing, and it finished. Now we can do this, we can modify the test slightly. I'll explain this one in a second. Dialing, out pulsing. <gasps> Didn't work, why? There. Again. It should go faster this time. So over here, we select the class of test, and the classes of test are just essentially what are we expecting the sender to do? What are we asking it to do? Uh, the first class here is called full selector. That means it's a reverted pulse call. Um, with a full selector class, it's going to dial, but it's not going to keep dialing as it out pulses, it's going to step through them. So it'll dial a digit, it'll out pulse that digit, it'll dial the next digit, it'll out pulse that selection, and so on. Um, that is timing certain things in the sender. It's timing the, the sender's ability to accomplish certain tasks within a prescribed timeline. If I operate this key, it goes a little faster. This is register control full selector. This is going to overlap the dialing and the out pulsing and it's going to test the register's ability to um, accept dial digits and advance through the outpulsing and walk together at the same time. You, keep, you see those two things kind of overlap. Um, another thing we can do is we can do a PCI call, that's panel call indicator. Um, so I will give it a PCI number, which is the office code for PCI here is 929, and I'll give it any station's numbers because I don't really care. Um, and this should be good. Let's go a little faster and hit it. All 
All right, so the sender successfully PCI'd out the data to the distant office, which is just this frame. Um, oh, it didn't. I'll tell you why it failed in a second. So this frame is really complex, by the way. Um, it's got all of these relay cabinets. Um, so this is all of the brains here and under there and up there. And it failed because there is a problem with the dial pulse counter in this sender. It can't handle very fast dialing. So that brings me to this test. These keys, one at a time, will determine how fast the test frame dials into the sender. Let me do this. I'll show you the difference. Um, let's pick a sender that will definitely succeed. Um, so we can do it at a reasonable speed. This is 15 pulses per second. Fifteen pulses per second max break. That means that the break interval of the dial is as fast as it can be. Here's twenty-six pulses per second minimum break. That means that the break interval of the dial, like the off interval, is as tiny as it could be. Um, we could do. Uh, I can't change it in the middle of it. The next test will be 26 pulses per second max break. So the break interval will be the largest it could possibly be. Now, these tests actually test particular characteristics of the dial pulse counter in the sender. They'll test specific relays to make sure that they respond in under different pulsing conditions. So you can imagine if the pulse train is a series of offs and ons, like opens and closes, um, breaks and makes, then the duration of the on interval versus the off interval actually is really important. Um, and the speed of the pulsing is really important. And there are certain characteristics of the dial pulse, uh, dial pulsing that can cause specific relays in the sender to freak out or fail. So what these do is these let us test it under slow min and max, medium min and max, and fast min and max. And each of these settings will test a particular part of the sender for behavior. And with that sender we were testing a minute ago where it failed on the dial pulse, I know why it did. Um, let's see if it does it again. Okay, so for the A digit, it registered a seven when I actually dialed a nine. So that means that under fast dialing conditions, it can't do the thing. Now, I can fix that, and I will, just not right now, because I'm doing a YouTube video. Okay. We can also do, um, on the newer senders, which is sender one and sender two, we can do uh, MF out pulsing. Let's do sender two. We'll set it for MF. You have to tell it we're going to out pulse five digits. And I think it should be three. I'm going to try three first. I always forget. And then we got to give it an MF code, which in this case is 832. Let's dial into it really fast and hit it. Anybody home? Why'd you get stuck? No, start over. MF test the sender MF back in here and this listen to the tones to make sure they were okay. Still another thing we can do is we can ask the sender to make tandem selections. So um, we have a we have a panel office tandem. It's a type of tandem switch and the sender can actually pass calls through the tandem to the eventual destination. So if I dial 232 and I use class one 
and D2, and then we pick office code, uh, or sorry, we pick office selections two and seven. We're going to choose a compensating resistance of 900, 900, and then we will ask it to do office selections and see what it says. That should be good. That should be not what I want. And let's hit it. Okay, there's the office selections. And then there's the selections in the distant office after the tandem. There's, again, office selections and then in the office after the tandem. Okay. So this, this frame is, it's kind of incredible. Um, this is one of the manuals for it. Um, this is like the text description and it goes over every single thing, like every relay in this frame and what it does in series. Um, it's quite long. And this was, I think, I think this was the first one that I, that I used here at the museum where I really realized that using test frames is an art. Once you start getting into the manual, this is one and this is the other one. Um, once you start getting into the manuals and you're kind of seeing how their testing methodology worked, I don't know, I started to realize that like, huh, um, you can get really, really clever with this to find really, really specific problems if you know exactly the thing to do. And this is, again, a thing I mentioned on the previous video in the number five crossbar. Um, I, I try to think of a problem to talk about uh, in the video, but it's actually really hard because in order for me to express to you the kind of problems that I'm solving with this frame, um, you have to know the circuit. For instance, its ability to synchronize on calls to a crossbar office. So there's this particular feature of these senders where if it's revertive pulsing into a crossbar office versus revertive pulsing into a panel office, it will synchronize the pulsing differently because a crossbar office can go a little bit faster. Um, so I've seen issues where this test failed in particular places and it shouldn't have, and it was indicative of a relay issue in the sender either an adjustment issue or a wiring issue. Do, 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 do. Last thing we'll talk about, one more cool thing about this frame is we can actually single step it through, which is, if you've ever used a debugger, completely useful. We can single step the dial pulsing, that's option number one, or we can single step the revertive pulsing, that's option number two. So if I'm in the sender troubleshooting a particular uh, aspect of it and I want it to stop at a certain point and let me evaluate it and inspect the circuit, single stepping is really useful. So if I start it now and we single step it, this is the advanced key. And now we're waiting for pulsing. Now we'll dial and get the next pulse. And then we'll dial again and get the next set of reverted pulses. And then again. And then after this one, it'll just finish. Oh, maybe not, one more. All right, so I'm single stepping through the pulsing too. So that is the sender test frame. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week. And um, yeah, thanks. <laughs>